This is Todd, the Terramorph. Kill, 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 kill! And he's gonna help us today. Die, you health bone! To understand weapons and everything about them. Burn the later! Which are the best and which are the rest. And this is everything you need to know about weapons in Starfield. So then, the plan is simple. I'll use every weapon on our lovely test buddy, Todd, and see how effective they are. For reference, I got every damage boosting skill unlocked for this, and all the weapons are modded for the most damage per second. Also, I ordered every single weapon in this list in the ascending order, from worst to best. Also, I'll have some timestamps down below, so enjoy. Let's jump in with a murdelation. Now, we start off with the first weapon that everyone has. Fists! So, let's fist Todd! Y yeah, um... This is clearly gonna take a while. Uh, in fact, it took so much time and... Actually, I dealt so little damage that, honestly speaking, at this point, it's... Well, pointless. Clearly, you're never gonna use a melee weapon against an enemy, despite the fact that there is a skill that boosts melee damage. So you start to wonder, what the fuck is the point of fists as a weapon? Seriously. And as much as I'd like to continue fisting Todd, we probably should be moving on. After seeing fists become as useless as a 40-year-old penis, let's turn our gaze upon the incel viaboos in the audience. You may think that that katana on your wall looks cool, but similarly to Starfield, all it does is telegraph cringe. I mean, look at the ripshank, it's a knife with a down syndrome. Despite the dedicated skill increasing damage, and even despite the 10x damage bonus from stealth, killing enemies with melee is like doing a handstand and shitting yourself. Melee weapons are not moddable either, and I'm only left asking the question, did anyone in Bethesda even playtest this bullshit? And coming from Skyrim, it's just such a disappointment. Oh, but don't worry, it's not the only thing in this list that'll make you raise these questions. Next up, actual weapons. However, this bunch was so bad at killing things that they might as well call themselves a Russian military. So slow that it's not even worth considering them as real weapons. For example, right now you can see Kraken. I mean, it was already clear from the start of the game that it was a piece of shit and not just in looks, but the longer game progresses, the worse it gets. Even though, for example, Pacifier I did use for a while, but this test easily shows how bad it is. Oh, and then we have the only weapon in the game that can't be lethal for those passi ugh, passif ugh, pacifist pacifist <laughs> oh and in the game files people have found a weapon called ecliptic pistol it's a weird thing but realistically speaking you're not gonna obtain it aside from console commands so it was just for fun oh hey do you like having thumbs would you like not to have them Presenting Shotty! Right then, the worst weapon that actually killed Todd, surprisingly to myself, was the Shotty. Holy crap, for majority of my own gameplay, this is the thing that I use the most. However, the tests don't lie. And just like the looks of the gun itself, it's an ergonomic nightmare that upon the first trigger pull, will fly out of your hands and detonate in your face with the next one. It also makes me wonder whether or not Bethesda's artists have ever seen a gun in their lives. Next up, Kalashniko. So apparently in year 2200, humanity collectively has renounced bot stocks. That or Bethesda's artists were sniffing glue too much. I guess that's why you can't craft it in-game either. Then we have 1911. You know, it kind of makes me think. It's funny that we don't see Mauser pistols in the game, but I guess that would require space Nazis. And now that would be too funny stupid for Bethesda to include. AA-99. Bland name, over-designed look, but surprisingly easy to use. So, too bad it's a piece of shit. Okay, I love VSS. However... Holy Jesus. What is that? What the fuck is that? What a concept. A sci-fi minigun that shoots lots of bullets. How cool is that? Yeah, apparently that's the only thing that's going for it. Negotiator, an RG6, but totally not with a phase, mom. With a badass name like that, you'd think that every enemy seeing it would shit bricks. But the only thing you'll be shitting is blood after everyone beats you up. 
And despite the fact that it has Hornet's Nest as an upgrade, it actually is far slower at killing Todd. I guess the only solace you can take is that it ragdolls everyone, so that's pretty nice. So there's your golden coating on your shit sandwich. Oh, a railgun shotgun. Another cool concept, isn't it? As it circles the toilet bowl like a brown log. Literally, these massive guns are made for these types of enemies, but they're weaker than uh, most other crap. Are you fucking kidding? This is not fun. This would be really fun as a power fantasy just using a minigun. Miniguns are fucking cool. And no, these are the weakest weapons ever. And also the most priciest. What the fuck is this balancing? Nobody balanced this game. Oh, and the same thing applies with the previous big guns. It's just, how could these big things not deal the most damage? Especially Negotiator, because its ammo is definitely very rare. And isn't it funny that Tactical Bro Pistol is actually better than a fucking minigun? Beowulf. Surprisingly, throughout the game, it's a decent enough weapon. I got really nothing funny to say about that. A lever-action rocket launcher. I mean, basically, you mix cocaine with speed. That's how cool it is. And though normally it's pretty crap, the Tesla pylon is basically where the damage comes from. But again, ammo is very scarce, so kind of useless in that regard. The Railgun Sniper. Oh boy, do I love these. The biggest single point damage in the whole game. And if not for the, well, basically non-existent balancing, this should have been the best weapon in the game. However, here we start seeing the fire weapons. Why is that important? Well, there is a skill called lasers. And on the fourth rank, you got a chance to start causing fire to erupt on your enemy as you're striking it. And see, fire damage, unlike all the other types of damage, is a percentile damage. So for big targets, oh boy, is it effective. And then there is no wonder that the second half of this list, the top part, is almost completely dominated by every weapon that can equip any kind of way to cause laser damage. Like, for example, Nova Light. However, this weapon is so low because, well, its chances of proccing the fire is very low, as I noticed. Damage normally is alright, for a pistol it's actually pretty nice, but its chance to proc fire is notably lower than most other things, so that's why it's here. Next up, Drumbeat, the biggest piece of shit next to Kraken. But the difference is that you can put whiteout rounds into this thing. The massive fire rate only helps with proccing fire, and thus, it basically coasts here on the top part of the list. Hmm, game balance. Sidestar, oh look, another same case. Oh, and look at that, a square barrel? What the fuck? I mean, okay, it's a very smart idea, right? I do wonder why no one has tried it before. Logger. Like a cat trying to hurl up, it's slow as shit. But hey, as long as you can proc fire, you win. Ah, magshot. Looks like a piece of shit, but I do love it. Really great burst damage, plus a little bit of bleed. And doesn't need to rely on fire to be this high up on the tier list. And then we have a gun called Rattler that looks like this. <laughs> Maelstrom. Aside from the fact that it's boring and mediocre, it has more needless pipes than a coma patient. And now finally we're getting into the top 20. Starting with Ion. Yes, a goddamn starting pistol. And of course the good old story of whiteout rounds for the fire proccing and a macro to keep shooting. Because this thing does not have full auto. However, the binary trigger on every pistol that can equip it is really good. Also, what the fuck is that red dot sight? Number 19, Kodama. A space ripoff Chris Vector, but shittier. Shoots multiple bullets per bullet. Kinda like a shotgun, but it's not a shotgun, huh? But the reason why it's so high up in this list is because of the bleed damage extra. Imagine what would happen if it had whiteout rounds. Oh god. Number 18, Grendel. Surprisingly, another overdesigned Space P90 that can deal pretty decent damage, whether it is semi auto or burst auto. As long as it got whiteout rounds, same shit, different day. Number 17, Urban Eagle. Basically, a Glock 18 in a trench coat pretending to be a desert eagle. Number 16, Razorback. With a dick this big, you'd think it weren't a bigger suppressor. But the funny thing is, whiteout rounds add absolutely no damage. And yet it still seems to have some laser damage, because oh boy, with a binary trigger, Todd definitely sparks flames. Number 15, Regulator. Whiteout rounds and binary trigger, what more is there to say? 
Number 14, Tombstone. Now, why does the word overdesign comes to mind in this one particular? Again, the same whiteout rounds and all blah blah. <laughs> Number 13, Breach. Yeah, how about we turn a slug round shotgun into a third, or was it fourth, most powerful sniper in the whole game? What the fuck? Also, it's so overdesigned that it's tactical bros version of plastic boob job paired with Michael Jackson. However, the real damage for this weapon comes from the Tesla pylon, just like Bridger. Number 12, Solstice. I swear, I mistook this as a child's toy from a gas station. But hey, it's a pure laser weapon, so here we go. Number 11, as a surprise, hard target. Oh, look at that, whiteout rounds. Hmm, I wonder what would happen if it didn't have them. So yeah, I still prefer Mag Sniper instead of this. Number 10, Equinox. Now, as a surprise, I actually kinda like shooting it. Though the box shape is quite uninspired, it's at least something interesting and not over-designed like rest of the garbage. Number 9, Mag Shear. Through the sheer power of fire rate, this thing can still compete with the fire proc weapons. Though boy, you're gonna go through a lot of ammo for this one. Number 8, as a surprise, the worst shotgun in the game, Coachman. It's also the only weapon where Hornet's Nest actually is helpful. And the result is number 8 slot, while using shotgun ammo. <clears throat> oh, did anyone hear that? Oh, I think it's the balance calling. And let's be honest, Bethesda team probably stole all the assets from Doom 2016. Number 7, the fucking rivet gun. Jesus Christ. Uh, Tesla pylon, basically. Congratulations, you are at the fuck of my life. Number 6, Varun Inflictor. Great damage plus fire proccing, what more can I say? The top 6 weapons are absolutely monstrous at this point, so let's move on. Number 5, the Big Bang. Absolutely love it. However, visual wise, it's so uninspired, I'm surprised Bethesda's artist made it. I guess all the creativity went into the bad weapon design. Oh boy. And just like that sci fi pistol, it doesn't proc fire that often, so it relies more on just general power. So it's good on everything, even without that bullshit. Number 4, Orion. Now, generally speaking, the weapon is alright or should be rather mediocre, but because of its great fire rate and just generally okay damage, plus the fire proccing, you have a monster of a beast. However, where have I seen this design before? Hmm. Number 3, the Varun Pistol, Star Shard. Sure, less damage than Inflictor on per shot, but still, great damage paired with burst mode and fire proccing, boy, you have something great here. And finally, the number two. Both of them are a fucking joke. Arc Welder and the goddamn Cutter. Ladies and gentlemen, if you needed the proof that Bethesda didn't test their own game before releasing it, or hell, designing the fucking balance, then here it is. If there is one thing that this list reveals, is that the fire proccing is insane. Kinda reminds me of Bleed Effect on the launch of Elden Ring, but not even that was that bad. Without this fire effect, a lot of these guns would immediately become one of the worst ones. So what are the chances that Bethesda will patch this? Um, hmm, let me think. Uh, none. I mean, they can be barely asked to put in FOV slider. And it's been nearly a month since release. But regardless of that, there's an interesting selection of guns overall. Quite a lot of them are over-designed, but fundamentally they're fun to shoot sometimes. Other times more frustrating than it's worth, but either which case, hopefully this helped you decide on what to focus on next. Which guns to keep and which ones throw in the garbage. Of course, I tested every single weapon without any modifiers like the rare or epic or legendary versions of them. So there are some extra things you can put on. So this is just a baseline for everything out there. In the end, all I can say is Bethesda, first of all, fix your shit. And second of all, actually spend some time testing your goddamn games. Especially the main goddamn combat. I mean, seriously, it literally took me a couple of days as a literal random YouTube person. What the fuck were your game designers doing? But beside of that, it took a lot of time to make this whole thing, so hopefully you enjoyed, and of course if you did, check out the Patreon and maybe throw a buck my way. Other than that, of course, join the discords and all the other useful, wonderful things. And I'll see you then next time.